What's up, you guys? How are you guys doing tonight? Yeah, that's what I feel like. But you, ah. Hey, so if everyone can close their eyes for me, I want you to lift your hands to heaven. Close your eyes and lift your hands to heaven. Come on, I just want you to take a few seconds to focus on Jesus right now. Man, if you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, I just want you to start praying in tongues right now. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Let it out. Jesus, tonight we're here for you, God. God, tonight we're here for you, God. Jesus, Jesus, you are our desire, God. Jesus, you are our desire, God. Jesus, tonight we thank you that, God, that we're not here for our neighbor on our left or on our right, but, God, tonight we are here to meet with you. So, God, we invite your presence in this place. God, we invite you to come in this room, God, and come and have your way. Somebody said, in the name of Jesus, amen. Somebody say, amen. Amen. Sweet. So who's excited to be here tonight? All right, you know what? I will take that. I will take that. You know, so man, uh, starting off tonight, last week we started a new series called What Now? Somebody say, What Now? Somebody say, What Now? And um, if, if, if you weren't here, we begin talking about I mean, what you do, you, you know, after camp or after like life altering encounters with God. Because like specifically at camp, right, you're away and Jesus moves like and you're in like la la happy good Jesus land, right, where everything is perfect. Everybody is seeking God. And then you come home to the real world again and you're like, oh, snap, what do I do now? You know, you, you, you say what now? Somebody say what now? Somebody say what now? And you know, so you come home to real life. You know, and last week we looked at a guy named Moses. Somebody say Moses. And investigated and then what Moses did because Moses had this absolutely amazing encounter with God on the top of Mount Sinai, or, or I like to say Camp Sinai. I mean, he experienced the glory of God in and, and, and just ways I mean, that we can't even fathom. But when Moses gets home, when Moses comes down off the mountain, he encounters real life. You know, man, he walks in on an entire nation, turning their back on God. You know, and, and I'm pretty sure Moses had a what now moment. You know, what do I do now, man, in the midst of this perverse generation? I man, how am I going to serve now, I man, in the midst of my high school when no one seems to love God? Even though I just got lit on fire. What now? And so we investigated, man, and we found out Moses' response. It's found in Exodus chapter 33, verse 7. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Woo. Come on, man. I love this. It says this. It says, it was Moses' practice to take the tent of meeting. I love it. And set it up some distance from the camp. Everyone who wanted to make a request of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. Next verse. Whenever Moses went out to the tent of meeting, all the people would get up and stand in the entrances of their own tents. They would all watch Moses until he disappeared inside. And he, and he went into the tent, or as he went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and hover at its entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. When the people saw the cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they would stand and bow down in front of their own tents. Inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Afterward, Moses would return to the camp, but the young man who assisted him, Joshua, the son of Nun, would remain behind in the tent of meeting. Somebody say the tent. Somebody say the tent of meeting. You see, I love this. I love this. This is my favorite portion of scripture because Moses understood why God moved on the mountain. He understood why God moved, man. He, he realized God didn't move. God didn't move just to make me feel the um, Holy Ghost goosebumps. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? He didn't make me move, man, so I could get real emotional, man, and cry at camp. That's not why God moved. God's goal was to have intimacy. Hear this tonight. God's goal was to have intimacy with Moses and his people, right? 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 
You see, and, and that's why, man, one encounter for Moses was not enough. That's why the mountaintop was just not enough for Moses. Is he said, man, I'm not going to wait until the next mountain comes around to meet with God again. I'm not going to wait. Man, I'm going to take my tent and I'm going to walk outside of this of this camp, man, where all these sinners are. You know what I mean? And, and I'm going to pitch my tent and I'm going to seek Jesus. Man, and God came. And God came. And did you know that we have access to the same thing? We said this last week, man, that we have access to the same God. You know, the Bible says that our tent of meeting is our prayer closet. Somebody say, my. Somebody say, my prayer closet. Let's look at Matthew 6, 6 really quick. It says, but when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you. And pray to your father in private. And your father who sees everything will reward you. Man, what an amazing picture of a prayer closet. And and so last week I ended saying that we're going to talk about what to do inside our prayer closets. Man, because this is one thing that I think trips people up the most. Is truth be told is that the prayer closet. By the way, we forgot our pillows. There's supposed to be pillows up there. Who sleeps without pillows? Um, but, 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 but the prayer closet, man, that this is probably one of the most scariest places for teenagers. It's so scary because it can be so awkward when you don't know what to do with Jesus, right? right? I mean, am I right? Like maybe you guys have tried it. You go in to pray, and so maybe you sit on your bed, and you shut the door, and you're like, all right, here I go. Oh, crap, what do I do now? So you're like, uh, hey, Jesus, it's me again. Uh, thank you for the food I ate this morning. Oh, man, I'm not good at this at all. <laughs> you know, and like, man, like, it's like, to be real, it stinks because you don't know what to do. And so because, like, you failed, you say, man, well, you know, the prayer class is not for me. Because you don't know what to do. And so tonight, is it okay if I show you guys how to pray? Brother, yo, that is one anointed pillow gatherer. I I thought you guys were really excited that I said, do you want to know? And you guys were like, yes, I want to know. Then I looked behind me. Good moment, good moment. So so starting off, man, when we're talking about, man, what do I do um, as I pray? We have to realize is that God has wired every single one of us different. Every single one of us is different. I mean, if you look at your hands, you look at your fingers, you have a different fingerprint than everybody else in the world, is that you have different DNA, which means this, is that you are wired to encounter God differently than everybody else. And so which means this, is that you might hear from God a little bit differently than everybody else. I like your dance. I'm feeling it. You know? Hey, man, that's how he encounters God. He's just a salsa. Come on, brother. But, 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 but listen, man, is that you're different. It's like this. Man, some people, man, God loves to speak to them through nature. And, and, and so they can go on like hikes or whatever, right? And they can receive from the Lord. Then you have the next guy that goes, man, and he doesn't hear nothing. And it's just like, dude, I got this revelation from this mountain that God just showed me. Oh, my God. And she's like, dude, what in the world are you talking about? You know, it, it, is that we're all different, right? Somebody say, right? So, so what I'm going to talk about with you today, I mean, this is a starting place. This is a starting place. This is not the ending place. Okay, this, this, is, this is a starting place. And, and I mean, as you grow and as you begin to do these things and apply these principles, and as you get to know Jesus, I mean, your prayer closet will start to shift and it will, and, and it will evolve. And then all of a sudden, every day is going to become a new adventure with Jesus. And it's really, really, really exciting. But we all got to start somewhere, right? So starting off, man, the big question is when and where do I pray? When and where do I pray? You know, the reason why this is set up as a bedroom is because I, mean, I believe that we all have a built-in prayer closet in our house. It's called our bedroom. It's called a bedroom man, because this is the one place that I can get away from all the chaos that's going on around me, right? I mean, I walk outside of my bedroom and the TV's blasting. You know, I mean, my mom's yelling at my little brother or my little sister, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, ah. you know? 
You try to read your Bible out in the living room, right? I mean, you might get like tackled by something or somebody. I don't even know. It's, it's just crazy, man. So I like to go into my bedroom and I like to shut the door to where it's just me and him. And there are no distractions. There are no distractions. Because distractions means that they can rob you from your time with God. And so, I mean, I want to shut the door to all those distractions. And, and, and then for me personally, um, I have to pray in the mornings. I said, tonight, guys, we're, we're going to get super practical. This, this isn't anything fancy. You won't get some deep revelations, but you'll get a lot of stuff that hopefully you can apply. Um, but I like to pray in the mornings because I realize if I don't pray in the mornings, then I'm probably not going to pray at all. You know, for, for me, man, man, because, you know, man, I, I, I got work I got to go to, right, man? And I can miss praying in the mornings, and with the best intentions, I can say, God, when I get home today, I'm going to spend two hours with you, and it's going to be amazing, right, 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 man? But guess what? I get home from work, and I'm hungry. Man, I want to eat. So instead of going to my prayer closet, you know where I go? Man, the fridge, or, or, or I just walk up to my wife, and I just stare at her. You know, babe, what's for dinner? She's like, what did you make? No, I'm just kidding. Yo, she cooks for me. Can, can, can I brag on my wife for a second? She makes me breakfast every morning before I leave for work. <laughs> Yo, that's my boo. That's my boo. <laughs> what's up? But no, but no, but no. Okay, seriously, you know, I get home from work, man, and I'm tired, and I'm hungry, and so I eat. Right, then after I eat, guess what? I get tired. And, and, and so then, like, I go and I sit on the couch. Then the next thing I know, I wake up, and it's like 8 o'clock, you know? And, and then guess what? I'm married now, and so I have to spend time with my wife. And, and so, like, before I know it, man, it's like 9.30 and 10 o'clock, and I haven't prayed. And I'm like, uh-oh, I should have prayed this morning. You know, so I think that mornings are good times to pray. And, and, and for you guys, you know, guess what, man? Guess what, you, you got school. Then after school, you got homework, you know? And, and then maybe you have sports practice after after uh, school. You know, and maybe you got to go study for a test or you got so there's some function that you have to go to and that you know, I mean, I'm going to get home late and I'm not going to be able to spend good time with Jesus. Or when I do get home, I'm not going to have enough energy to. And, and so listen, uh, that that's just for me, all right? I have to pray in the mornings. And maybe you say, dude, my night is wide open. You know, when I have five hours to spend with Jesus after school, go for it, all right? Go for it. No one's stopping you. Here's, here's what matters to God is that he just wants your best. He just wants your best. Okay, so it's God, when can I give you my best today? Listen, he, he, he does not want just what's left. He wants your best. All right? That was good. Come on, preach it, brother. <laughs> and so I've learned, all right, I've learned, if I'm going to spend time with Jesus in the mornings, then guess what? I have to have an alarm. I have to have an alarm. All right? In fact, I'll be with you. i got to have, like, three alarms, <laughs> okay, that go off, like, every, like, two to five minutes apart because I know, man, on that first alarm, guess what? I'm going to hit the snooze button, right? You know, like... I'm like laying in bed, right? You know, like by this time Blaine has stolen all the covers, you know, and I'm freezing. <sighs> Jesus, let me survive. No, I'm kidding. All right, and, and so right, my, my alarm clock goes off, you know, and what do I do? I mean, it would be awesome, but I was like, God, I'm ready to spend time with you today. Shut up, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Heck no, man. I'm like this, you know, my alarm goes off. I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> I'm so half asleep, right? You know, and so, I, so I, I, I hit this news button, you know, and then my alarm goes off again, you know, and, and probably by like the third alarm or, or really it's a second alarm because I have two, um, I, I kind of wake up, all right? You know, for me, man, I got to walk around some, you know, I man, I got to get the blood flowing so that when I do start praying, I'm, I, I'm awake, Listen, and, and can I tell you guys a verse that revolutionized uh, my morning prayer life? This is seriously, this is powerful. I'm not even joking right now. If you have your Bibles, go to Mark chapter 1. This is not going to be on the screens. Mark chapter 1. Uh, da, da, da. So check this out, right? Mark chapter 1, 
verse 35. All right, so so check this out. I mean, the morning or the day before, right, I man, Jesus had a super busy day. I mean, he was like healing people left and right. You know what I mean? And, and then in verse 35, it says this. It says, before daybreak the next morning, this is powerful, Jesus got up and went to an isolated place to pray. The key words, Jesus got up. Listen, if I want to spend time with God, in all seriousness, man, I have to discipline myself. Because, man, my flesh, especially in the mornings, maybe it's after school, man, it's going to be kicking and it's going to be screaming and it's going to go, you're tired, you're hungry. No, get on Facebook, get on Instagram. Why won't you snap somebody? You know, and your flesh is going to be screaming. Like, ah, don't pray, don't pray, don't pray. Go to sleep, go back to sleep. And you got to say, man, I'm going to get up to spend time with Jesus because he means more to me than even sleep. Amen? Amen? Does, does, does that make sense to you guys? Once again, man, just getting really, really, really practical. Um, and, and, and so, okay, so we've gotten up, right, man? Now, man, we're, we're, we're in our bedroom, our door is shut. We're about to pray. But, but I think the thing that gets us all is, is that we don't know how to stay engaged in prayer. You know, because we start praying and like we're like, oh, God, I forgot what 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 I'm here for and tacos and burritos and you know is it taco Tuesday yet um you know and, and so in order to stay engaged in prayer you have to remember this one word I mean this word is so huge you ready you got to remember cats someone say cats someone say cats listen cats are the key to staying engaged in prayer how many of you guys like hate cats Yo, yo, can I tell you guys, man, I hate cats. Listen, I've, I, I, I've, known, I've known from an early age that me and the, and the feline species are mortal enemies. Um, when, when I was a little kid, I had a cat named Skittles. And, 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 and I remember is that I would literally try to flush Skittles down the toilet. <laughs> it's either that or, or I would literally bury her in my Lego box. <laughs> Like that cat hated me for good reason, but 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 no no no. All right, cats are the key to prayer, and obviously tonight I'm not talking about in order to pray you need to go to the pet store and buy yourself you know a furry feline. Um, that is not what I'm talking about. Um, the word cats is actually actually an acronym. So I'm gonna say acronym. So I'm gonna say cats. So in this word, this the C stands for confession. Somebody say confession. Somebody say confession. Listen, when I start praying, if there is a pink elephant in the room between me and Jesus, I should take care of it. It sounds so simple, but it's so true. Listen, when I start praying, you know, and I know I've messed up in some area, and God knows I've messed up in some area, you know, instead of acting like it never happened, you know, oh, God didn't see that one. You know, and like you can tell me there's just this distance between me and God. I mean, the first thing I should do is I should get right with God. I should get right with God. Because God is so, so, so amazing and, and I should clean the air. Is that the truth is, is that any sin that I let linger between me and God will create distance and space between us. See, see, because what you think might not be a big deal now will turn into a big deal tomorrow. See, what's stage four cancer now, if it's left undealt with by the Holy Spirit, I mean, three weeks from now, it might be stage four. And it might spread fast. Is that I need to deal with anything between me and God because unattended sin turns into a major problem. Amen. You know, I like um, to, to view it as almost um, a dimmer, like a light dimmer. You know, you, know you, you, you can go to a dimmer and you can turn it down just a little bit, just, just a little bit, and you can barely notice the difference in the room. You can barely notice the difference in the room. 
I was like, man, when I sin and I don't really deal with it at first, you know, it's like I can almost barely notice the difference in my relationship with God. And so next you turn it down a little bit more. And because my eyes have adjusted to where I'm at in the room, man, now I can barely notice that's going down a little bit more. And it goes down and down and down and down until it's black. And I wonder, man, what happened between me and God? What happened between me and God? Well, it's because I never dealt with the sin problem that was there. See, check out what the Bible says in in, in 2 Corinthians 13.5. This is what Paul says. He says, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. You know, Psalms 139, verse 23 through 24, it says this. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Man, what a good Bible verse. God, search my heart. Jesus, Holy Spirit, is there anything in my life that's grieving you? Man, what a great place to start out praying. Jesus, is, 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 is there anything in my life, God, that you don't agree with, God, or, or, or doesn't line up in your word? God, is there any thought pattern in my life that's contrary to what you say that I need to get rid of? See, because the truth is, is that when most Christians sin, is that, man, they pull an Adam and Eve, and they go running and hiding from God. They go running and hiding from God because they think that God is so angry and he's so mad. And then God is waiting to rebuke me and to punish me for my sin. But this morning, tonight, can I let you know that God's response is his response in the garden? He says, Tony, where you at? Jennifer, where you at? I'm here to be with you. See, your skin does, your skin, not your skin, your sin doesn't scare God. Your sin, it, it, it doesn't scare God. You see, my sin should never drive me from the prayer closet. I mean, it should drive me to my prayer closet. See, because I got to run to the person who can take care of it. And, and, and you know, a lot of us, man, if we're real, man, we deal with some real issues in our life. Maybe it's a sin pattern. Maybe it's something that I'm struggling with, man. Maybe it's something in my identity. Listen, instead of running to the world to try to figure out who I am and try to solve my problems, I need to run to the Holy Ghost. Because He has the answer. Because only He can change me and fix me. See, see, I love it. It, it, Is that God gives this amazing promise in 1 John 1, 9. Amazing promise. He says, but if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. God wants zero distance between you and him. Zero distance. Amen. Amen. So in the acronym CATS, all right, we we, we covered confession, man. Um, The A stands for adoration. So I'm going to say adoration. So I'm going to say adoration. See, see, I, I, I love what it is that, man, this part is all about worship. Listen, and so getting real practical, man, is that even before I start confessing my sins, is that what I do is is I want to create an atmosphere of worship in my bedroom. So what I'll do, man, is that I go on YouTube. And, and I have a prayer list, man, that me and my wife pray to you all the time. And, and so I go on there. I mean, I turn on my phone. Right, man, I, I got my Bluetooth speaker here. Oh, sweet, it's on. So let's see here. So let me go to YouTube really quick. Whatever. All right. Forget about it. All right. And basically, listen, I'll connect, man. And listen, man, I just start creating an atmosphere of worship in my room. You know, and then what I do personally, man, is that I like to worship and pray in tongues. Kind of intermittently or in between is that you know a song comes on you know like jesus you're worthy of it all i'm not going to sing for you because my voice is so bad um right and so i mean i'm singing you know god i love you or maybe i'm just declaring you know to god how much i love him god i glorify you jesus i bless you jesus i honor you jesus jesus you're so good you're a good good father you're a good good father Shorama yesha papa dandia. Shorama yesha papa dandia. 
Jesus, I bless you, God. I love you. I love you, God. God, God, I, God, I'm so excited that I get to be with you this morning. And I enter in like that. See, because worship is God's invitation to come in the room. I won't even put it that way because he's already in the room. Um, it's God's invitation to manifest or to make... Um, I don't want to say visible, um, to, to, to make you feel his presence per se. I, I, I guess you can kind of say, with his presence, man, comes all kind of spiritual goodies. See, the Bible says this in Psalms 22, verse 3. It, it, it says that you are, yet you are wholly enthroned on the praises of Israel, or we could say the praises of Christians or your people. Is that, man, that, that word enthroned means is that when praises go up, that God literally comes and he sits in the room where, where praise and worship is happening. And I don't know about you, man, but I want God to sit in my room. Man, so I make sure that I worship. Because, listen, worship leads to intimacy with Jesus. Listen, I have not met one person who I consider, man, like this dude walks with God and they don't have a worship life. Or this dude walks with God, man, and they don't pray in tongues on a regular basis. Well, hold on. Well, that last one, uh, okay, I take that last one back. I'm sorry. I lied. But, but, but listen, okay, so I know what you're saying. Pastor Josh, that's amazing, but I don't know who to go and pick on my YouTube list to listen to. Mooney, can we throw up that list? Here, here are some amazing people, man, that you can go and you can find. They have good, anointed, anointed music to worship to. So, man, if I was you right now, I would be busting out your phones, man, and writing some of these names down if you don't know them. Because these are the guys that you want to listen to. These are some great guys to pray to. Then we threw a little bit of everything in there for you guys. So, man, I got like two minutes left. Two minutes left, man. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to try to do this. Somebody say T. Somebody say T. Somebody say Thanksgiving. Somebody say Thanksgiving. Is man. I think if anybody should be a grateful people, man, it should be Christians. Man, man listen, is that it should be us. Because the highest price was paid for us. Man that, man, that God came and gave all to us. You know, I'm not going to lie to you guys tonight. Is that you live in an entitlement generation. It means that your generation has a spirit of entitlement all over it. Is that not saying you do, but your generation does. Is that so many people think, is that, man, I deserve this and I deserve that. For instance, I mean, I deserve a cell phone because everybody else has one. I didn't say it. Cameron said it. How about how, how about this? How, how about this one? I'm so guilty of this. Is that man? I deserve Christmas presents because it's Christmas time. I mean, I deserve birthday presents because it's my birthday. Mama said, "No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't." Listen, the only thing that we deserve is hell. That's the only thing we deserve, man. That is the only thing that I have earned through my own efforts is a place in hell. And, and you know, man, and with entitlement, the truth is, um, is that it carries over into our relationship with God. You know, and I go to God and I say, God, I need this. God, I need that, Jesus. God, could you do this for me? God, 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 God I'm really lacking in this area. And when's the last time you told God, thank you? When's the last time you told? How about this man? When's the last time you told your parents thank you? Hey, Dad, thanks for working and putting a roof over my head. Hey, Grandpa, thanks for taking me in. Hey, thanks for Mom. Thanks for cooking a meal for me every single night. Cause, cause, li- 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 listen to me. How you treat your authority is just a reflection of how you treat God. That's how you treat God. I mean, so I cannot say that I honor God, yet I disrespect my parents. Dude, you don't honor God. Not, not, not one bit. So when's the last time you said thank you? So, man, you know, to, to, to be honest with you guys, this is not a strength of mine. It, it, is that I can get into the God I need, I need, God I want, I want zone. 
you know, but man, a great thing to start doing is saying, you know, after man, I'm worshiping, man, right, and I'm and I'm praying in the spirit. God, thank you for today. God, thank you for the breath in my lungs. Jesus, thank you for coming and dying on the cross for me. Jesus, thank you for paying the ultimate price for my life. Thank you, God, for choosing me. Thank you, God, for adopting me as your son and your daughter, God, when the only thing that I deserve is hell. Jesus, you chose me. Thank you. May you want to enter into the presence of God for sure? You start doing that. It's going to happen. I promise you it will happen. Thanksgiving. Man, we got to be thankful. And I'm so out of time. So my last one, man, is it, it, I'm wrapped up in three. Here, the S in cats, man, it stands for scripture, supplication, and silence. Is I rarely spend time with God, man, without reading my Bible. Listen, man, this, 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 uh, this book, this, these words of life to me are everything. You, you know, so many, so, so many people complain, man, I never hear God. God never speaks to me. Uh, it's because you don't read your Bible. Read your Bible. And so, a few guidelines for reading your Bible. Listen, when you read your Bible, start in a book and go to the end of the book. So don't just say, man, I'm going to read my Bible today, and, and, and I'm going to start in the middle of Matthew. And you start reading Matthew, and you have no clue what's happening. I don't understand it. You start in the middle of a book. It's your fault. I love you guys. And, and so, I man, start at the start of the book. If, if you don't know where to read, I man, start in the book of John. Such an amazing, amazing, amazing book to read about the love of God. Um, it, it's pretty easy to understand. Um, and, and, and as well, find a version that you can understand. There are several different versions of the Bible. All right, I mean, the, 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 the version that I love to read, it's either called the Passion Translation or there's another translation called the New Living Translation. That are, they're, they're just great, man. It puts it in modern day language. Is that I don't get all the these and thous and thines and, and the whatevers. You know what I mean? All that stuff, man, it loses me and I don't understand what's happening. So I go to the New Living Translation. Next is supplication. I mean, this is where, guys, God wants to answer your prayers, man. I mean, he sees your needs, and he wants to answer your needs. So the amazing thing is all you got to do is ask. You know, I mean, so this is where, man, I start saying, man, God, thank you so much. God, you see, man, that me and my wife, God, man, that we have this bill that we need to cover. Is that God, is that we have an immigration fee, God, that we need to save up for and earn. So, God, please, Jesus. God, we need you to meet this need. God, I thank you that you're faithful. God, Father, I thank you, God, that we're covenant children. So I thank you, God, that you're sending the money in, God, and you're blessing us. You pray for your needs. And Jesus will answer a really cool story. Like the other day, we got like three random checks in the mail each. It was a good day in the McCoy house. And then lastly, man, there's silence. Is, is that there has to be a place in my prayer closet where I learn how to shut up. Is that I let the spirit of shut up settle on me. Come on, Jesus. And I just listen. And I listen for the voice of God. That, that, that doesn't mean that God is going to come and he's going to be like, Joshua. Oh, yes, God. No, 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 no. Listen, is that God is spirit, man, so he speaks to your spirit. And a lot of times those thoughts um, or, or God's voice comes across as spontaneous thoughts um, in, 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 in your mind. I and mean, it's not something that I boil up or, or something that I um, conjure up or make up, man, but it's just these spontaneous thoughts when that hits your mind. Listen, that is God speaking. And listen, I know it's God speaking when it lines up with the word of God because God will never contradict his word. He will never contradict his word. Amen? Amen? Did you guys learn something? Was that helpful at all? So listen. So li- listen, guys. Quick family moment. Is that we have the chance as a youth group to go to another level. To go to another level. But it's only going to happen when you stop just waiting to seek God or hear from God or receive from God on a Wednesday night. And then you start to make your prayer closet your practice. Is that, man, this has to be your practice. Is that, 
men and women of God are not just born on a Wednesday night, but men, they're molded in their prayer closet. This is, this is where it happens at. Man, you want to walk with Jesus? You want to conquer your sin? Man, you want God to use you in awesome and powerful ways? This is where it happens. It's, it, it's when no one else can see you. When no one else can brag on you and say, man, look at how hard he's worshiping. Man, look at how hard she prays. So no one else is watching. And you say, all right, God, I'm here tonight, and I'm ready to get to know you. God, I'm ready to get to know you, Jesus. Because there's an amazing promise in the Bible, and I'll end with this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is God's heart for you guys. In fact, I'm just going to tell you guys. Uh, it's in James chapter 4, verse 8, where, where, where James writes, he says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Listen to me tonight. You have a promise. You have a promise that God says, man, if you'll come and you'll seek me, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm not going to leave you hanging. That doesn't mean that every single time I'm going to feel the Holy Ghost goosebumps. You know what I mean? You guys, there are days I pray and I don't feel nothing. Nothing. Man, there are weeks that I pray and I don't feel nothing. But guess what, man? I'm not in there for feelings, man. I'm in there to get to know Jesus. And my feelings do not determine, man, my level of intimacy with God. Is I mean, I have this passion burning in me that says, God, I have to get to know you. So whatever it takes, God, whatever it takes. He said, listen, just like Jesus, in that verse we read in Mark, he had to get up. You're going to have to get up and start spending time with God. Or you'll never grow. You'll never grow. Wednesdays and Sundays are amazing and they're important. But this is where it really happens at. This is, let me say this. This is why we preach on Wednesdays and Sundays. Is to see you go and do that. Amen. Amen. Awesome. With every eye closed and every head bowed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Right now, Holy Spirit, I just invite you into the room. I invite your presence, God, into this place. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're coming to convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Man, so one of the things that I said is that it's about intimacy. I mean, this thing with Jesus, it's not about rules regulations, man, what I can do right, what I can do wrong. Man, it's just is that God wants to have a relationship with you. Because me and you, we were born in sin. Man, and this sin it separated us from God forever and doomed us to hell. And God knew that. And he says, man, I want a relationship with my kids. And so he sent Jesus to come and die for you and me. And Jesus paid the price and the penalty for our sins so that we could enter into an amazing, amazing relationship with God. And Jesus said this, if anyone believes in me, I mean, if anyone puts their faith in me, I mean, if anyone puts their confidence and trust in me, I mean, he shall not perish, I and mean, he won't go to hell, but he'll enter into this relationship. He'll have everlasting life with me. So tonight, if that's you, and you say, man, I want to get my life right with God, I man, I've never accepted Jesus as the Lord of my life. Or maybe I once did, man, but now I'm not in right relationship with God. And tonight you want to get right on the count of three, I want you to raise your hands. One, two, three, is there anybody in here? Thank you, I see your hand. Is there anybody else? Thank you, I see your hand. Thank you, I see your hand. Is there anybody else? Thank you, I see your hand. Thank you, I see your hand. Is there anybody else? Come on, guys, don't mess around. This is your eternity we're talking about here. God wants to get to know you. Thank you, I see your, I, I see your hand. Is there anybody else? Awesome. If everyone could just pray this with with me, I want you to say, God, tonight I give up the right to run and rule my own life. I ask for forgiveness of all of my sins. God, I believe that Jesus is your son. And I believe that on the third day, by your power, he rose from the dead. So right now, Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life. I thank you that God, that you are adopting me right now as your son 
and daughter. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So really quick, I just want a prayer of you guys. Um, Father, I thank you for all these amazing, wow, God, amazing, God. God, God, people in this room, God, God, they're your kids, they're your children, God, so amazing. Um, Father, God, I, I just thank you, God, that you're putting such a hunger, God, in their hearts, God, to come, God, and to do cats, God, in the prayer closet, as silly as that is, God, God, that they're going to come before you, God, and they're going to, God, confess, God, and they're going to come and adore you and worship you, God, and they're going to live a life of thanksgiving before you, God, God, and they're going to read, read your word, Father God, and they're going to, God, God, bring their needs before you, God, and they're going to be silent and hear your voice. God, I pray for all of those things, God. Now let those be established facts in their life. Jesus, this is what you died for. This is what you died for. This is what you came for, God. So I thank you, Jesus, that you're just lighting such a fire in every single heart to go and to passionately seek you. God, it doesn't have to be for long, God. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Um. So before I let you guys go, really quick, um, who is about to head off to college? In here. If you guys are about to head off to college, I want you to stand up and to get up here. We want to pray over you guys really quickly. So in fact, if everyone can stand up for me, hang on with me guys for a few more minutes. For just a few more minutes. I know I preached like forever tonight. Um, and so if you guys can just line up across for me. Or, or we can face them. That's cool, too. Um, um, so, man, guys, check it out. Man, you guys are about to man, embark on an amazing adventure. Man, and what I taught tonight, man, if it applies to anybody, it applies to all of you guys. All right, college is real, man. You have more freedom than you've ever had before, and you're going to have more temptations than you've ever have, had before, too. But listen, this right here, your prayer closet, is what's going to keep your relationship with God strong, as well as getting in a good Bible-believing, Spirit-filled church. All right? All right, guys, so listen. Seek Jesus, all right? Seek Jesus, all right? Dude, you're so amazing. You know that? Jesus has big plans for you, man. You, you want to go Air Force, right? I get that right? Marines? Boss, either way. Um, so, and let's, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to pray with you guys. Jesus, I thank you, God, for all these absolutely, God, amazing, amazing, amazing students. God, right now, I just want to say that we bless them in the name of Jesus, God. God, right now, God, that we release them into their God, God-given destinies, God, destinies that you have for them, God. I thank you, God, that your plans for them, Jesus. Oh, my goodness, God. We can't even fathom them, God. You say, God, no mind, God, has conceived, God, no ear has heard, God, no eye has seen, Jesus. God, God, God the things that you have in store for each and every single one of these people, Jesus, these students, God. So, Father, I thank you you right now that you are going before them God in everything that they are doing God we call them blessed in their coming in God we call them blessed in their going out Father God Jesus I thank you that wherever they are going that they're going to be a light God on their campuses God that they're going to be a city on the hill Father God Father God they're going to be salt in the earth God God I pray God for revival God through them God wherever they go Jesus God that they're called to bring your kingdom God they're not just called to go and make good grades Jesus but you have sent them on a mission God, you have sent them on assignment, Jesus. So I thank you right now, God, that you are using them, God, in mighty and powerful ways, Jesus. God, we release them to you, Holy Spirit. We release them to you. God, come and have your way, God, in them and through them, God, and for them, Jesus. God, we just bless them once again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody give these guys a hand. You guys can go ahead and grab a seat. Go ahead and grab a seat. All right, last, last thing. Kim, come on up. Come on up. I'm sorry, man. I'm so long-winded. Jesus, help me, guys. Tomorrow, Kim is getting her gallbladder taken out. Yes. Um, and so we, so we want to pray over her. Because this is like somewhat of a serious operation, even though they do it all the time. Um, it's, it's, it's serious. I think she's kind of freaking out a little bit. Um, but, Jesus, but Jesus has her. And so, in fact, babe, why, why don't you pray? Sure. <laughs> Thank 
you, Lord Jesus. God, we just bless her, God, right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for her, Lord. God, I just thank you so much for the, the amazing heart that she gave her, Lord Jesus, that she's such a mother. She's such a, a big sister and mentor, Lord Jesus. I just bless their life right now in Jesus' name, Lord. I bless their life with everything you have for them. God, every blessing you have for them, Jesus. God, I bless them in Jesus' name, God. And God, for the procedure that she's about to have, Lord, I know you are there with her, God. You're going to be there with her. I thank you, Jesus. It's going to be smooth. God, there's no way for the enemy to work in this. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for wisdom for the doctors in Jesus' name. God, even the recovery is going to be so speedy, Lord Jesus. It's going to be miraculous, Lord. I thank you your hand is going to be in every single process, Lord, that you're going to literally just take their hands and do the, the procedure yourself, Lord. I just thank you for peace, God. I thank you for peace, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for peace, and thank you for strength for John, God, and through it all, Lord Jesus, that he's just for the strength to be with, you know, to be with kids and all that, God, without his wife being there, Lord Jesus. I just thank you for strength and just to be with her, God, in this season. We love you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Awesome. So next week. So next week, we have a special service. Listen, I want you to bring everybody that you know. So I say, pack this house. Listen, that's my vision, man. That's my dream. Guys, we're going to pack this house, and Jesus is going to rock people. Have a great night. We love you. Go buy a T-shirt. Leave now.